This video is about using NVIDIA's Instant NGP research software to make your own NERFs. Uh, I'm going to assume you already know about Instant NGP and you've tried out some of the demos and you've played with the Fox, for example, and, uh, and now you want to do your own. So here what I've done is I've taken a bunch of pictures before this video, uh, put them into this robot images directory, and it doesn't really quite matter where you put this directory, but I put it here for convenience. And as you can see, I've taken you know some 30 odd images here, and uh, and I'm hoping to get a nice nerf out of it. Um, these images, you'll notice there's some nice reflection and so on, which is kind of cool. And you'll be able to see some of that reflection interpolated uh, when I make the nerf. So once I have these images, uh, I basically what I use is Anaconda, and that's just a framework to basically let you set up a, a Python kind of a script area. Um, and so I've got this all set up. I don't have to really do too much to, to get going here. Um, I'll put in the notes for this video, which are below, uh, how to, uh, what kind of commands to sort of do to install the things you need. The things you're going to need are basically Calmap and FFmpeg and a bunch of other uh, Python-y stuff which uh, can easily be pulled in. They're, they're not so hard. But anyway, once, once I'm now at this, uh, this area, what I can do is I can go to my nerf directory. And in that directory, you'll, you'll see there's not much there right now. There's just, uh, you know, just this images directory, right? So what I do is I run this thing called callmap, and this is the command line that I do it. Again, that's in the notes below. You don't have to go do anything about that. And what callmap is doing is it's basically doing an, uh, feature matching, uh, which is basically taking the separate images and trying to see what the images have in common. And so that sets up this whole little database of where all those cameras are located. And callmap is, uh, is open source. It's a separate thing from NVIDIA. It's just software you can install yourself and uh, use in various ways. And anyway, so we're not going to show you the call map just sit here, sitting here for a long time. Uh, what it does is it's going to read in all those images and try to figure out how to correlate them. Um, one thing I will note is that for these images, I originally uh, took a bunch on my phone and then I loaded them to Google Photos. And what I found is that Google Photos has, uh, has this flaw. If I downloaded all the images then from Google Photos, um, it has this flaw that it does some weird thing with orientation. And so what I find is if, if I go into image, you know, uh, Irfan view, basically if I go into the image directory, um, what I can do is this thing where I can add all the images. Uh, I can say, you know, I want to batch convert, and then I set it to some other directory. And it doesn't matter where. And, and that basically lets me uh, convert them into sort of JPEGs again. <laughs> it's basically just reading them in and then writing them out to some other directory. And that seems to get around the flaw. Uh, what I found is if you don't do that on Google Photos, you get this strange kind of, um, uh, all the images are kind of rotated 90 degrees or the, the, the nerf won't properly form. Um, so I've already done that to these images. And so now Calmap's going to go do its magic. And we'll see where Calmap is in this process. So it's it's still crunching away. Uh, this takes a few minutes. So, you know, I, I may cut the video at this point and <laughs> you'll, uh, we'll, we'll restart in a second. So call map is now done. And what I'm going to do is go to the main directory. And, uh, and I guess I should show you what's actually in this directory now. So what call map did was created this whole little database and created this transforms JSON file, which is what's going to get used in our next step. So our next step is just that we're going to run the software which you'll have already had to have built to uh, make this instant NGP stuff work on anything like the Fox database or whatever. And what it does is, um, anyway, this testbed thing uh, gets this image, uh, basically sucks in our images and sucks in that transforms DB and um, database and it starts to create the uh, create the you know the the nerf. <laughs> so here we have the nerf now. So that's the good news is that we now have this nerf of this of this robot guy who's called Diana by the way. If you ever want to come see this thing, it's uh, made by this uh, artist named Skunk, and it's in Somerville, Massachusetts. 
right next to Aeronaut Brewery. So come on down. Anyway, so, so we've now got this thing going, and that's great. And here's probably the most important thing in this whole video. If you now want to make a little animation, the thing you have to do is expose the camera control. And the camera control, by default, is kind of hiding under this instant NGP thing. So what I tend to do is move this instant NGP guy way over here. And now you'll see this camera path thing. And you'll also see this camera path thing when you, when you look at this menu. You'll go, boy, that's tiny. And that's the trick, is that you can resize this thing. And that's actually quite important. So let's, let's in fact, start looking at this. Oh, and, and one other cool trick you can use here to just improve image quality in general. You'll notice it's very bumpy in this kind of interactive mode, or it's very jaggy, is if you turn on DLSS and, uh, and crank that up to 1, you get this nice, smooth, interpolated uh, super sampling kind of mode that's uh, from uh, sort of deep learning super sampling. Uh, totally separate process. That's an NVIDIA thing. Um, anyway, you get this better quality image uh, just for just for interactive purposes. This doesn't affect your final animation or anything. So what do we do for an animation? Okay, so let's say I say, okay, I like this as a starting frame. All I do is I go add from cam, and now that's added a camera. And I can now go to, say, some other location. Let's say I want to go over here, and I can go add from cam, and somewhere over here. And again, it's a little hard to see, so I can move this and try to pick up some better view, perhaps. Uh, so let's let's maybe zoom a little bit, or maybe we'll zoom out a little bit. And we'll go add from cam there. And then finally, let's, uh, let's move it one more over here. And add from cam there. So now I have four different uh, cameras that I've set up as my little path. And what you want to do here is save. And so that's going to save a file. In fact, I might as well show you what that file looks like. Uh, that's, that shows this uh, base cam JSON file. So once you've got that saved, you know you're good there. The other thing we want to do is we've let this thing crunch for a while. Um, it doesn't take very long to converge to a reasonable solution. Once you start seeing this kind of noisy sort of up and down, things are not changing very much solution uh, up here, that means you're, you're pretty well settled in, um, you know, further you can stop training if you want. Uh, but basically at this point what you want to do is you want to go and save your snapshot uh, just to save you having to redo that work. Now you can you know you can recreate the snapshot fairly easily, but we'll just save it here just to save ourselves some work. So we're all done that with that. We've you know we've saved our database, our nerf to date, and we've saved our cameras. And now it's time for the, the last step that actually creates our creates our uh, little animation here. Um, so at this point, one thing you're going to want to make sure you have is FFmpeg uh, needs to be installed. And I'll, again, put that in the notes below. Um, and other than that, what you can do is you can just run this uh, script with a bunch of command line options. And again, it's in the notes. Um, but one thing you might want to do just to save yourself some, uh, some teeth grinding is change seconds to 1 and maybe change like the FPS to 5 or something or 4 or something, something very low. And that'll give you a video that's going to be very short. It'll take just a few seconds to generate. Um, but the good news is there is that by making that short video, it'll also show you whether this software is all set up properly with FFmpeg. Uh, if it's not, it'll just make those four frames and then it'll die. And then you'll know you have to go install FFmpeg. Anyway, I know I've got FFmpeg ready to go. So what I do is I hit go. Uh, you know, I hit it, and now it's going to go through this process, and it's going to be—it's going to take a while. <laughs> I've got 480 frames, 60 frames per second, and for just an eight-second video, and so now it's starting to crunch these frames out. And you can see it's taking, like right now, that was you know eight seconds for one one frame, uh, and it continues to take eight seconds per frame. So it's going to be a while. It's, it looks like it's going to be an hour. So I—I'll uh, be back in an hour, and we'll continue the video from there. We're back. We're all done now. And so, right. So, so you know, these are the files that we, uh, <laughs> we started with. And where this ends up is, because I ran it from this topmost directory, is this video here, which I'm going to rename something like uh, Nerf Robot. Why not? And so then we can play this thing. 
and we get a, a little video of the path that we took. Let's see if I can squish that down a bit. I think it'll, yeah, <laughs> it'll it'll resize itself each time. But anyway, you can see that indeed this worked out. And oh, one other thing is that I definitely wanted to mention that I made a little goof, which is that when I uh, when I started running this, I actually had another process running in a separate window. Uh, uh, digital creation content content creation app and that was sucking down a lot of GPU as it turned out so by <laughs> by closing that down uh, my frame time went from about eight seconds a frame to about three and a half seconds a frame so uh, so don't be me you know basically make sure that you've turned off all you know extraneous processes that might be sucking down the GPU because this this stuff is is going to use the GPU to uh, retrace all these different views and put them in and make the movie for you. Now, you also notice it's super sampled. I haven't had to do any DLSS stuff. It does 16 samples per pixel. So you get this nice high, high res uh, movie, basically. So that's about it, and uh, hope you have fun with it. Bye now.